Christmas stockings are one of my favorite things. Ever since I was a kid, we always got small, inexpensive items and wrapped them in little leftover pieces of wrapping paper. It didn't matter if they had a box or not. You would just wrap it up by itself and put it, a piece of tape on it. As long as it was covered with paper, that's all that mattered. And it was so much fun to open all these little gifts that we found in our stockings on Christmas morning. So if you're looking for stocking stuffers to give a knitter, and most of these could go to any fiber artist, whether their thing is knitting, crocheting, weaving, or spinning, then keep on watching for a fun list of stocking stuffer ideas that you can easily grab for this holiday season. Hi everybody and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. Oh my gosh, it has been challenging for me to record videos this semester, but this week is the last week of classes and I have all my final exams ready to go. In the meantime, I've been collecting a bunch of little items that I think would make excellent stocking stuffers for your fiber friends and I thought I would record a quick video today to share those with you. I brought my Christmas stocking that my mom made for me when I was little. She made one of these for each of my sisters too. She cut out the felt and the fur and drew out all the letters by hand and cut the bells by hand as well. So every year we would have our stockings hung up and on Christmas morning we would get up and they would be filled with little goodies. Everybody knows that I love to find things that are different, not just the run-of-the-mill gifts you see everywhere. I also like to find things that aren't going to junk up people's houses, but that are going to be useful or well-loved. So if you are looking for small gifts to give your knitting friends or other fiber artist friends, or even keep for yourself, then here is a list of 18 stocking stuffer ideas that I've collected to share with you. And I will include links to everything I talk about today in the description box below so you can easily shop. I'm gonna go from the least expensive to the most expensive items. But everything I I'm going to talk about today is under $25 and most are under $10. So hopefully you can find something in the bunch that you are excited about and that fits within your budget. Great knitting gifts that are really useful don't have to be expensive. So the first stocking stuffer is this simple little sticky clip. I've had this thing for ages and I couldn't find the exact one for sale anywhere but I did find something similar which I'll link below. So these are sticky clips. They are a little plastic piece with reusable adhesive on the back. You can stick this to pretty much any surface and then it's got a slot where you insert paper. Now a lot of people use these instead of tacks or tape to hang things on the wall like posters or your grandchildren's artwork. But what I use it for is holding paper patterns, like when I'm riding in the car or on the train. And then I stick it on the dashboard if I'm in the car, or maybe on the seat in front of me if I'm on the train. That way I can see the pattern and work from it. And then when I'm done, I can just remove the whole thing and put it away in my project bag. So the adhesive stays sticky and can be used over and over again. Like I said, I've had mine for years and it's still going strong. These little clips hold the paper very firmly. It is not going to come out until you want it to. There are a couple of rubber grips inside there that hold the paper in place. Inserting the paper is super easy, but you really have to pull on it to get it back out. Now these little sticky clips are very inexpensive. I found them for around $4 for a pack of 20, so that's like 20 cents a piece. You could buy a box of them and give one or two to all of your fiber friends and keep a couple for yourself as well. All right, the second item on my stocking stuffer list is this little kaleidoscope. And yes, I know, it, this is a child's toy but I find it to be such a useful tool for putting different colors together. If you're like me and feel sort of challenged in coming up with pretty color combinations 
and figuring out what's going to look good together, you might find this helpful. Like, sometimes it's hard to see the big picture of what several yarns or several fabrics are going to look like simultaneously in a project. So to get an idea, you can simply put the yarns or the fabrics close to each other and then look at them in the kaleidoscope and just kind of move it around. You can see the colors at different angles and I don't know, it helps me put colors together. Now these little kaleidoscopes are super inexpensive. They're just a little piece of plastic with a multifaceted lens on them. Um, you can get 12 of them for under $6 on Amazon, which is around 50 cents a piece. And of course, if you wanted to get something nicer, there are fancier ones that you can get if you want to pay a little more. All right, stocking stuffer number three is this Silva Loom Handy Tool by Susan Bates. It is a small aluminum tool that has a crochet hook at one end and a knitting needle at the other end. These are really nice for picking up drop stitches with the crochet hook end and the knitting needle end can be used as a cable needle. As you can see, this is pretty small. It is four inches long. It doesn't take up a lot of space. You can easily put it into your notions pouch or project bag. It's one of those functional tools that you can't have too many of. And it's also great because it's a bargain at $1.60. You can pick these up at your local yarn shop or craft store, but I'll put a link below to a shop where you can get them online. The next item is a set of what are called yarn dots. These are cute little decorations you can insert into your hand knit items. They are made out of a rubbery material with a plastic button backing. And what you do is you slip the plastic button on the back through your knitting and then the front design will show as a decoration. To use these yarn dots, you'll need an item that's kind of loosely knit or that has some yarn overs creating holes where you can insert it. So for example, this is a shawl that I knit and you can insert a yarn dot through one of the yarn overs and then the design would show when you're wearing it. These yarn dots come in different sets of two. The ones I have say Knit Happens and Yarn Diva, but there are others you can get as well. They are not expensive at all. You can pick up a set of two yarn dots for around $2. You might be able to find them at your local yarn shop or you can order them online. Next up, I have a couple of similar products and both are from Knit Happy. This one is a little organizer for post-it notes. This pack is two inches tall by three and a quarter inches wide. Inside, it has a pad of larger sticky notes on one side, and on the other side, there are five different colors of sticky flags. This other one is a little bit bigger. It is three inches tall by five inches wide, and when you open it up, it has a large sticky pad on one side, and on the other side, there are two smaller sticky pads in yellow and orange, and then along the side, there are sticky flags with points on one end. And both of these post-it organizers are super handy for marking your place in paper patterns. They are compact and will easily fit in your notions pouch or project bag. They're also nice to carry in your purse or bag so you always have something to write on. So yeah, these are super convenient and useful and I know a lot of people who love this type of thing for organization. These little post-it cases are $3 each. Um, the smaller one you can get from stuffyoulove.com and the bigger one you can get from Nitpicks. Okay, next in line we are up to number seven on my list and that is some knitting themed washi tape. I think this is so stinking cute. This washi tape is decorated with balls of yarn, skeins of yarn, strands of yarn, a scissors cutting yarn, and knitted swatches. It is so perfect for your knitting friends. A lot of people use washi tape in crafting or journaling for decorating um, handmade cards or planners. So of course they could use it for that. 
but washi tape is also great for marking your place in a pattern because it's easily removable. Now, how cute would that be to use washi tape with a knitting theme to mark your place in a pattern? I also use it to decorate envelopes when I write letters to people. I sometimes use it for wrapping gifts too. I might wrap something in tissue paper and then put a little piece of washi tape on it to keep it closed. There are so many things you can do with this. So anyway, if this speaks to your heart, you can get this knitting themed washi tape for $3.50 per roll. Oh, and the tape is five millimeters wide and you get 10 meters in the roll. Stocking stuffer number eight is this little plastic compartmental travel case. I know a lot of knitters who have these and some have found them at their local hardware store, but you can get them on Amazon too. These are so practical for storing your knitting notions. You fasten it with this sturdy clip on one end and it opens up to two sides. One side is a single large compartment and the other side has three small compartments and two medium sized ones. Each compartment has a semi-transparent plastic lid that clicks shut so the stuff doesn't fall out. Now, I use the large side to store a foldable scissors, cable needle, tapestry needle, tape measure, row counter, things like that. In the smaller sections on the other side, I have different size stitch markers. And then you just close it up and it fits into the palm of your hand. So you could definitely take it with you in your project bag and everything would be right here. It comes in different colors. I have a blue one and a couple of green ones. So these are really cute and useful and you can get them for around $4 each. Number nine on my list is conductive thread. I know I've talked about this before, but I thought I would include it in my stocking stuffer ideas because it is so small and inexpensive and wonderfully useful. Now that it's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere and people are wearing gloves and mittens a lot, one issue is always how to be able to use your phone when your fingertips are covered with mittens and gloves. See, most modern touch screens work by completing an electrical circuit with your finger. So when you have fabric in between your finger and the touch screen, the screen won't work, so you can't answer your phone or do anything else. But this conductive thread makes it possible for you to use your touch screen while wearing gloves or mittens. This conductive thread is made out of silver fibers. It's two ply, firm but flexible, and a little thicker than everyday polyester or cotton thread, but it's still thin enough to be sewn by hand in medium eye sewing needles, or you can carry it along with your yarn while knitting a project. I mean, you wouldn't need to use it throughout the entire project. You would just need it on the fingertips. So, so yeah, you can either stitch this onto your fingertips of your existing gloves or mittens, or you can knit or crochet gloves or mittens with regular yarn while carrying this conductive thread along in the parts where you would need it. You can get a bobbin of four to five meters of conductive thread from Knit Picks for around $5. So that is another tiny yet useful stocking stuffer. My next stocking stuffer idea is this package of mini skeins. These are called bonbons from Lion Brand Yarn. I think these are so adorable. The package includes eight mini balls of DK weight yarn, and each one has 28 yards in it for a total of 224 yards altogether. These little bonbons would be, would be great for making doll clothes, Christmas ornaments, baby booties, little mini stuffed animals, bracelets, you could even use more than one mini ball to make a little larger project with stripes or color blocks. I think there are so many things you could do with these bonbons. There are eight different sets available that have different colors. Some are cotton and some are acrylic. The regular price for a package of bonbons is $8, but as I'm recording this today, they are on sale for $5 on the Lion Brand website, so I would definitely go there and check them out. I'm not sure how long they'll be on sale. 
Um, you can probably also find them at your local Joann's or Michael's and use a coupon and maybe get them for even less. Okay, we are up to item number 11 on my list and this next item is the Boy 3-in-1 Needle Gauge. This is another super handy tool. It's a simple concept made out of two round pieces of cardboard that are attached in the middle so you can turn the top one. So first of all, you can use all the holes around the perimeter to check the size of your needle or hook. The measurements are in millimeters and go from 2.25 millimeters to 10 millimeters. Second, you can find your needle or hook size and see what the recommended yarn weight is for that size tool. In the chart in the middle, it also gives you an approximation of stitches per inch for that particular combination of needle or hook size and yarn weight. So I think it is a handy little tool, especially for someone who might be a newer knitter or crocheter who might be wondering what yarn weight would go best with a specific needle size. And this 3-in-1 needle gauge is pretty affordable at only around $5. Okay, next up, number 12 on the list, is this micro clip light from Mighty Bright. This is another small yet handy tool. It is a super bright LED light, I don't know if you can see that, that is advertised to last 100,000 hours. I don't know if that's true, but I've had this one for at least six or seven years and it's still going strong. Now I love this little light because it's tiny but very bright. It is an inch wide by one and a half inches tall. It has a clip on the back that you can use to attach to just about anything. What I use it for is to see my knitting if I'm in a place where I need more light but I don't want to turn a room light on like sitting in bed at night or riding in the car at night. I just attach it to my collar actually and then I can see my knitting. The light itself is encased in this clear plastic section at the bottom which rotates 180 degrees by just turning it with your hand so you can direct the light wherever you need it which I think is really great. It's lightweight and durable and it only costs six dollars. We are up to item number 13 now and this one is a decal for your windows in your house or in your car or you could put it on your laptop or mirror or other smooth surface. The one that I have here is a ball of yarn with knitting needles and this is the four inch size, but you can get several larger sizes all the way up to 10 inches across. They also come in a bunch of different colors. These decals are made from vinyl and are self-adhesive. They are easily removable and don't leave marks or adhesive residue, but they're not reusable. I mean, the vinyl is likely to tear when you remove it, and once you take it off, you can't reposition it. Now, I got this one from Amazon for $7, and again, they have lots of different sizes and color options to choose from. Um, also, if you do a search on Amazon for knitting decals, you'll find some others that you might like as well. So that's another idea for your fiber friends. Get them a cute little knitting decal. All right, next up is this interesting knitting calculator from Pony. This is kind of a cool little gizmo. It is made out of plastic and consists of a base with two movable discs mounted on top. And the base has a little window in the bottom of it. This tool helps you easily calculate how many stitches and rows you need to obtain the required length and width of a garment you want to knit. So what you do is knit a four inch square swatch and place this window over the top of it. Count the number of stitches and rows within that window, which is five centimeters square. And then what you do is take the middle disc, which has the five centimeter point prominently marked, and you line that up with the number of stitches and rows you counted in your swatch. The number of rows is represented in the measurements on the outer perimeter of the bottom disc, and the number of stitches is represented in the measurements on the perimeter of the top disc. So, for example, in this swatch, I counted 10 stitches and 14 rows in the little window. So I line up the five centimeter mark with 14 rows on the outer disc and with 10 stitches on the inner disc. Once you've got that done, the numbers around the whole thing line up and tell you what you need to know. 
So let's say you wanted to make something 40 centimeters wide. How many stitches should you cast on? Well, you just go around the, the middle wheel to 40 centimeters and then look at the top disc, which is number of stitches, and that says about 80 stitches. So you would cast on 80 stitches. Or what if you wanted to make something that is 90 centimeters long? You would follow the middle disc around to 90 centimeters and then look at the corresponding number of rows on the outer disc, and that is about 250. So you would need to knit 250 rows. So that's pretty nifty. And it comes with an instruction sheet that tells you all this and how to use it. I think this would be a great little gift for any knitter, and especially for beginning knitters who are just learning about gauge and making these kind of calculations. This is, it's kind of a modest tool that makes it so easy, and it only costs around $8. Okay, we are up to number 15 on the list, and this next item is a pocket scale. These little scales are so handy for weighing leftover yarn and figuring out how much yardage you have left after a project. So for example, here I have some yarn that was left over after I finished some socks. And this particular skein of yarn was originally 400 yards and weighed 100 grams. So I open up the scale lid, press the on button, and then weigh my ball of yarn. And it's around 24 grams. So I know that I have 24 grams out of the original 100 grams. So I just take 24 divided by 100 and then multiply that by the original length, which is 400 yards. And that comes out to 96. So that tells me I have about 96 yards left in this little ball. Yeah, so these pocket scales are super useful for making this type of calculation. Now this particular scale has a 200 gram capacity. It has a backlit LCD display that is easy to read. Uh, a clear plastic lid covers and protects the weighing surface and that is easy to open so you can use the scale. You can also weigh either in grams or ounces. It takes up minimal space, it's lightweight and easy to pop into your notions pouch or project bag. Plus it's so inexpensive, you could buy several of them to give to your friends or to keep for yourself to have in different project bags. Um, this one costs around $8.50. All right, coming in at number 16 on my stocking stuffer list is a set of adorable stitch markers. Of course, stitch markers are always an easy stocking stuffer. There are dozens and dozens of different types of stitch markers for sale all over the place. Um, at your local yarn shops, at big box craft stores, on Etsy, and you can even make your own. But these particular ones I thought were so cute and different from other stitch markers I've come across. They are little cat heads. <laughs> so you have the regular round stitch marker with the little ears. They are simple and snag free, and I like that they don't have anything dangling from them. I personally prefer these minimalist stitch markers over the ones that have beads and things hanging from them because those get kind of heavy and I find that the dangling um, charms often want to get caught up in your knitting and get in the way when I'm trying to work with the yarn. So these stitch markers come in two sizes. I have the smaller ones here, which are called kittens. Uh, the kitten stitch markers are 11.7 millimeters in diameter and will fit needles up to a U.S. size 13. The larger ones are called cats and the cat stitch markers are 17 millimeters in diameter and will fit needles up to a U.S. size 15. They come in sets of eight and are available in either brass or silver. I got them for $8 from an Etsy shop, which is in Canada, but the shipping was only $4 and they came within a week. So I think these are so simple and whimsical and something adorable and a little different to treat your friends, especially the cat lovers among us. Okay, next stocking stuffer number 17 is a pop socket. These are the little discs that attach to the back of your phone. They are made out of plastic and stick to your phone or phone case with a tacky reusable adhesive. They look like a small accordion and pop out to two settings. So what are they used for? 
Well, pop sockets have two main functions. One, for a secure grip, and two, as a stand to keep your phone upright. The pop socket makes it easier to grip your phone so that you'll be less likely to drop your phone. Also, the grip makes it easier to hold your phone with one hand so you can take better selfies if you're into that. The pop socket also serves as a stand to prop your phone up when you watch videos so you don't have to rig something up or lean your phone against something to set it upright. Uh, pop sockets come in a ton of pre-made designs and you can find them at local stores like Target or you can order them from Amazon. Now the one that I just got here is a super cute llama design that I love. I also saw on Amazon several other knitting related options like several with yarn pictures, um, a knitting superwoman, and different sayings related to knitting. They all run about $15. So I think that would be something fun for a stocking stuffer. And lastly, this is the most expensive stocking stuffer on my list, and it is a beautiful needle case. This needle case would be for something like cable needles or tapestry needles, not knitting needles. Um, this one is three inches long, not counting the ring at the top. It is handmade from acrylic with chrome accents and a key ring on the top. Um, to access the inside, you just screw off the top and the compartment inside is waterproof and food safe, so you could use it to hold pills, toothpicks, or even a small roll of, of dollar bills. Now, I use it for storing tapestry needles, and I think it is just more elegant than using the plastic containers or square cardboard that comes with the tapestry needle packaging. You could probably fit about 10 tapestry needles in here, I would guess. Um, this needle case runs about $22, and I got it from a shop on Etsy. So yeah, if you're looking for something different, something a little sophisticated and beautiful to give as a special gift to someone, then check out this acrylic needle case. So that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope you got some helpful ideas for your holiday gift list this year. Let me know which ideas you liked and which ones you might be getting for yourself or for your knitting friends. Or maybe you already have some of these. And if you do, are you enjoying them? And do you have any other ideas for stocking stuffers? I know there are literally hundreds of other products out there, and I think we're all interested in knowing about which ones you've used and what you've liked or disliked. And what's on your holiday wish list? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. I think that it's always really fun and helpful for all of us to know what other people like and would enjoy getting as a gift because then we can maybe focus our attention on those type of products to get for our loved ones. And thank you for participating in the conversation. I always love hearing from you and read every single comment. I try to respond as much as I can, but lately I can never seem to get to every comment, but I do read everything you write. And of course, please leave a comment if you have any questions about today's show or if you have an idea for what you'd like to see in future episodes or if you'd like to see a product tested. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you next time. Um, hopefully next week I'll continue my holiday series and talk about some new gift ideas that might facilitate your gift giving this holiday season. And be sure to check out my holiday videos from last year if you haven't already seen them. I did a whole holiday series gift series last November and December and um, had lots of suggestions that are still available and you might get some ideas for your gift giving this year. I'll link to that playlist below. In fact, as I said, I'll include links to everything I talked about today in the description box below. So I hope to see you next week. And in the meantime, stay smart and have a sparkly week.